The sinusoidal signal is the most important signal in the analysis and design of linear time invariant systems. In this short lecture, we'll review the mathematical definition of the sinusoidal signal and we'll illustrate the way in which sinusoids with different amplitudes, frequencies, and phases can be combined to approximate a rectangle signal. The importance of the sinusoid is threefold. First, when a sinusoidal signal is the input to a linear time invariant system, the output is also a sinusoid. Second, many important signals, such as the ones that transport electrical energy, are well approximated as simple sinusoids. And finally, nearly all signals, regardless of how complicated they might appear, can be represented perfectly as a combination of sinusoids with different amplitudes, frequencies, and phases. The cosine of 2 pi t is a simple example of a sinusoidal signal. This signal attains a peak value of 1 when time is equal to 0, and attains a minimum value of negative 1 when time is equal to 1 half, or negative 1 half, and it reattains its peak value of 1 when time is equal to 1, or when time is equal to negative 1. Because the peak value is 1 and the minimum value is minus 1, we say that the amplitude of this signal is equal to 1. And because the time it takes for this signal to cycle from peak to peak, or from trough to trough, is equal to one second, we say that the period is equal to one second per cycle. Or we say that the frequency is equal to one cycle per second. It's possible to specify a sinusoid that attains a peak other than 1 and a trough other than negative 1, has a frequency other than 1 cycle per second and a period other than 1 second per cycle, and attains its first peak at some place other than time equals 0. But to do that, we'll need to include three parameters in our definition of the sinusoidal signal. Well, here's the general form for a sinusoidal signal as a function of time, which is defined by a cosine function with three parameters. The parameter a represents the signal's amplitude, the parameter f represents the signal's frequency, and the parameter phi represents the signal's phase. Well now let me show you how to determine these parameters from a plot of the sinusoid. The amplitude is simply the peak value the sinus sinusoid attains, which is also related to the trough. So negative a is the minimum value, positive a is the maximum value. The frequency is the number of cycles the sinusoid goes through in one second, or the reciprocal of the frequency, also called the period, is the time it takes for one cycle. So the distance from that peak to this peak measured in seconds is the reciprocal of the frequency. The phase can be harder to recognize directly from a plot, so let me show you how I do it. First I rewrite the argument of the cosine. In this way. This now looks like a cosine with zero phase, or a cosine that would have its 
closest peak to the origin at the origin that's been shifted in time by an amount equal to negative phi over 2 pi f. So if we look to see how much delay the nearest peak has from the origin, the time origin, that time is equal to negative phi over 2 pi f. If the delay or the time delay to the nearest peak is to the right or a positive time away from the origin then the phase will be negative. If the delay happened to be to the left or a negative time then the phase would be positive. The units for the phase are radians. For this signal then the amplitude is equal to 4 the period is 0.2 plus 0.2 plus 0.1 is 1 half of a second so 1 half second per cycle so the frequency is equal to 2 cycles per second The phase is equal to negative 2 pi f times the delay to the first peak. That delay appears to be about or equal to 0.1 seconds. The frequency is 2 cycles per second. So we have negative 2 pi radians times 2 cycles per second times 0.1 seconds. So that'll be equal to negative 0 0.4 pi radians. Now let's take a look at how we can combine sinusoids with different amplitudes, frequencies, and phases to make other interesting signals. Well, let's see what happens when we add sinusoids together. In this figure, this straight line represents a sinusoid with a frequency of 0 cycles per second and an amplitude of 0.25. This dashed line represents a sinusoid with a frequency of 1 half cycle per second and an amplitude of about 0.45. When we add those together, the constant signal serves to move this sinusoid up by an amount of 0.25 and that's the solid line. Now we've added another sinusoid with a frequency of one cycle per second and an amplitude of about 0.3. And when we add that sinusoid in, over this region all of the values are positive so the result is a positive number and growing a bit. In this region we've got a couple of positive contributions and a negative contribution and we can see that that tended to bring down the value of the sum. So over in these regions we see things that are closer to zero. Here it's up closer to one. If we add another sinusoid in, this time we have one with a, a frequency of one and a half cycles per second and an amplitude that looks to be around 0.2 Again, in this region, there's some positive, some negative, so the sum is close to zero. In this region, everything is positive and the sum is here. If we add in yet another couple of sinusoids, and we do this following a particular prescription, and we continue to add more and more sinusoids into the mix, what we can ultimately do is build up a signal that begins to resemble very much a rectangle function. Except for this odd behavior that occurs at these areas of the step discontinuity. Here, 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 and here. Well those oscillations are caused by the discontinuity and no matter how many sinusoids we add into the mix, 
will always see these oscillations. That's a, that is a consequence of the step discontinuity. We see it when we try to create rectangle functions, but we'll also see it with any function, any signal that has a step discontinuity. But we won't see that phenomena when we try to build signals that do not have those discontinuities. And let me show you an example of one of those. Here's another situation. We'll start out. It looks very similar to the signal that we built up previously. Add more sinusoids. We continue to add sinusoids, but now the relationship that we've made between the frequency and the amplitude of the new sinusoids is a little bit different. And instead of building up a rectangle function, we're building up a triangle function. And now if we look at the nature of our triangle function, that's an excellent, excellent representation of a triangle with just a few sinusoids with none of the discontinuity, none of the oscillations occurring because we do not have discontinuities. Well, to learn how to design the amplitudes, frequencies, and phases to make these and other arbitrary signals, we'd need to study the important tools called the Fourier series and the Fourier transform. Well, that's a review of the sinusoidal signal and a brief look at its ability to serve as the building blocks for more complicated signals.